today is the October 25th to the United States is the feast of St. Isidore the Farmer. And uh, today you can send will be back here again in Green Bay, or in the middle of nowhere near Green Bay. Uh, in Green Bay, and uh, it's going to be back. Uh, and uh, so this, so this uh, feast of St. Isidore the Farmer, we'll read the epistle for the St. Isidore. The epistle of the Feast of St. Isidore the Farmer is taken with the Epistle of St. James, chapter 5, uh, various verses combined together. <coughs> Brethren, be ye patient until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the ear, patiently bearing till, uh, uh, till ye receive the early and the latter rain. Be ye therefore also patient, and strengthen your heart, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Behold, we account him blessed who have, who, the, who have endured. You have heard of the patience of Job, and you have seen the end of the Lord, and, and the Lord is merciful and compassionate. Confess your sins one to another, and pray for one another, that you may be saved. For the continual prayer of a just man availeth much. Elias was a man passable like unto us, and with prayer he prayed, that it might not rain upon the earth, and it rained not for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. And then the gospel, taking that according to St. John chapter 15. At that time Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he will take away. And every one that beareth fruit, he will purge it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean by reason of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abide in the vine, so neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same beareth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If any one abide not in me, he shall be cast forth as a branch, and shall wither. And they shall gather him up, and cast him into the fire, and he burneth. If you abide in me, and my word abide in you, you shall ask whatever you will, and it shall be done unto you. Thus for the words of today's holy gospel. Father and the Son, Holy Ghost, Amen. We have today the feast of St. Isidore, the farmer, and the epistle and gospel taken about a farmer, the Agricola. The Agricola in Latin, the farmer, and the old word, of course, in English, husbandman, from which we get the word husband. The husband is a farmer. The husband is the one who uh, raises crops. He's the one that brings forth fruit. And usually to a husband is united a wife. And the wife is united to the husband. And because he's a husband, which means he's a farmer, how do we know a farmer? You can go into the city and you will find that almost everyone, unless they live in an apartment complex, they have some grass in their backyard. They have something growing around them. And they open their refrigerators and they have fruits and vegetables. And every man partakes of food that comes from the farmer. But not every man is a farmer. Not every man is a husband. Not every man is a husbandman. But God, multiple times in sacred scripture, multiple times in the lives of the saints, he compares, what is it that we must be? We must be husbands. We must be farmers. And what is the farmer? St. James talks about the farmer in the epistle. Patiently waits. And today I have a few considerations concerning the farmer. And our times. And what God demands of us. 
So, seek first what is needed. Seek first what is needed to sustain yourself. Seek first that which shall keep you perfect in yourself, and God shall be added unto you besides. <coughs> that's one possible text. Maybe a modernist might tell you that that's what it said in the original text in the Gospel of St. Matthew in the Sermon on the Mount. Seek ye first that which you need. Seek ye first that which is necessary for your sustenance and for your life and for your perfection and God shall be added unto you besides. But if you read the Gospel of St. Matthew, you might discover that the passage is not quite that. Rather it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his justice, and all things shall be added unto you besides. What are we going to seek first? Seek what is necessary for yourself. Seek what is necessary for your perfection? Seek what is necessary for your life? Seek what is necessary for your mind? Seek what is necessary for your heart? <laughs> Seek what is necessary for your passions? Seek all these things that are necessary, and if you do well, God shall be added unto you besides. Many have tried this. Many, many, many millions of souls down the last 6,000 years have tried this. And it will always lead to disaster. <coughs> it is not the way of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his justice. Today we have the feast of a farmer, St. Isidore. What do we know about him? He lived in Spain, near Madrid. I'm sure the farm he had now is paved with streets. Skyscrapers are probably sitting on the farm in which he is. He lived on. He was in the, near what we now part of the city of Madrid. He's a patron of that city. He was born a child named after Saint Isidore, who was a father of the church, who was also Spanish, that lived about seven hundred years before Isidore the farmer was born. And he just grew up to be a farmer, and he became a farmer. And he is the one that we turn to to bless our crops. The one that we turn to to bless our work and to take care of us <coughs> in our farms. <coughs> Carry the statue of Isidore out into the fields and bless the crops, that there might be good crops. And so therefore, what kind of a farmer was he? Surely he was a great example of the farmer. He knew all the modern techniques of how to grow the maximum number of, of uh, peaches from a peach tree, and the maximum number of grains of wheat per acre. He would get 5,000 bushels per acre, whereas you're lucky if you get five. And so he was a surely great farmer, and he was a man who was an example to all farmers. And since he was a great farmer, a great husband, a true husband, a husband is married to his crops, and a wife tackles along. The wife is married to her husband, but the husband is married to his crops. The husband is married to his fruit. You know, that's one of the reasons why God chose only men to be priests. Because priests are married to the fruit. Priests are married for the purpose of fruit. They are not married for the purpose of sustaining themselves. And those will come and connect, connect themselves to the priests that they might receive the fruit also, or the wheat. One of the many reasons why God made men priests, not women. Because every man, even if he doesn't work on a farm, must be a farmer. Every man, even if he doesn't know anything about the outside world, that is outside the doors of his, of his office, and outside the doors, doesn't know how to change a light bulb, doesn't know how to drive a tractor, doesn't know how to dig a hole, but every man must be a farmer. And so who is the great farmer? What kind of a farmer was he? Well, we can talk to his fellow farmers. And the fellow farmers said, This man, Isidore, he is a lazy bum. So if you want to be a good farmer, be like Isidore. Be a lazy bum. That's what his neighbors complained about. <coughs> this man was never in the fields. Maybe once in a month, 
So far, he seems like a great example of a farmer. I know many that would like to be a farmer like him. That's why you have an infomercial in the morning. For only $19.95, you can buy my special kit, and you don't have to plant any seeds. <laughs> you don't have to go out in the farm and plow. You just simply buy my kit, and then for $19.95, when you get this kit, you will know everything there is to know about farming, and you can sit back and do nothing, and you will make millions on the thousands of peaches, the thousands of grains of wheat that you will grow on your farm. All you got to do is buy my little CD for $19.95. Because it used to be $9.95, but because of inflation, it's gone up. So now it's $19.95. So Isidore, what we know about him is he didn't spend much time in the fields, but his crops were better than everybody else. He wasn't often behind the plow. But his wheat grew. And when they went to look for him, he wasn't there. Why did his crops grow? What made his crops better? Because he took the Gospel of St. Matthew very seriously. When he was a child, he heard that Jesus Christ said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his justice, and all other things shall be added unto you besides. And therefore Isidore... He would go to Mass in the morning. Because you should always go to Mass in the morning. And after Mass, he would make a Thanksgiving. And then a servant would come and say, Isidore, what? It's time for dinner. And so you go home and have dinner. You go to Mass in the morning. And when his wife would cook dinner, not breakfast and not lunch, because he'd never make it for those. And he would come home for dinner. We have a statue of Isidore. We have a church of St. Isidore it's in Denver, Colorado. I was going to get a big, big statue. I'm going to make a statue on I-70. It was going to be a massive statue, you know, about the size of this room, with, with oxen going towards I-70. <laughs> massive oxen going towards, going towards I-70. And then the angel plowing the field. <laughs> the miracle of the life of St. Isidore. And then Isidore kneeling and facing the tabernacle. We looked into Mexico and various places to make this huge statue. Well, it never happened, got transferred. It wasn't able to make this statue. And it was going to be there in the entranceway to St. Isidore's, a church that I was a pastor of for many years. And Isidore, what did he do? He faced the tabernacle. He didn't face the grains of wheat. And what does St. James tell us? gives the example of the farmer. What control does a farmer have over his farm? Do you make the wheat grow? Do you make it edible? Do you make the peaches come off the tree? Do you make them grow? You go into a farm, and what do you do? You take a metal plow, and you take perfectly beautiful grass and dirt, and you make it into a mess. <laughs> Then you take seed and you throw it in there. And what do you do? You wait. You wait. How does it grow? Only God knows. He knows how it grows. He knows how a little bitty seed turns into an apple tree. A little seed turns into a peach tree. A little seed grows up a metal stick. And out come tomatoes and he knows how these things happen. He knows. We don't know. And therefore, St. James tells us, do you want to go to God? Do you want to be a servant of God? Then you've got to be a farmer. you got to be a farmer. Brethren, be ye patient until the coming of the Lord. The Lord's coming. He's coming right now to judge our world. And He's coming to judge us. He's coming to judge us individually. He's coming to judge us as a nation. He's coming to judge us as a church. He's coming to judge all the world. What do we have to do? Be patient. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the ear. He patiently bearing till ye receive the early and the latter rain. Be ye therefore also patient, and strengthen your heart, 
for the coming of the Lord is at hand. What do you do when you need rain? You wait for it. Mm. Father Sipper used to tell the story very often of an old farmer in the Middle Ages. You know, back in the days of the feudal system, where there's 10 or 15 farmers living around a castle. And this one particular farm, his wheat was better than everybody else's. His, his, his crops were better than everyone else's, but they all were farmers one next to another. And the farmers came and said to him, How on earth do you grow better than us? What are you doing that's making your crops successful and our crops not so successful? He said, Oh, it's very simple. I always get the weather I want. How do you do that? Well, whenever I want it to rain, it rains. And whenever I want it to not rain, it doesn't rain. And when I want it to be dry, it's dry. Every time. How do you do that? Well, it's very simple. I want it to rain, and God wants it to rain. I want it to be dry, and God wants it to be dry. And so when it's a drought, I am happy that the ground is dry, because God wants it dry. And when there is a torrential rain, I am happy with the rain. Because God wants it to rain, and that's why my crops are better than yours. And they went, oh, man. <laughs> Their crops never got <laughs> Their crops never improved. Why? Because they're bad farmers, that's why. They were not husbandmen as God wants them to be. Who decides the rain? And here again, James describes further. You have seen the Lord is merciful. Now Elias was a man, passable like unto us. Elias was a man that suffered. Elias was a man that experienced a parchness of a dry throat. Elias was a man suffered like unto us. And with a prayer, he prayed that it might not rain upon the earth. And it rained not for three years and six months. He prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Why does God send rain? You know that we learn many times in sacred scripture, and Jesus Christ himself tells us, at the end of the world, there will come rain. At the end of the world, there will come great droughts. At the end of the world, there will be great earthquakes. There will be volcanoes. And there will be terrible weather in many places. Why? Because of the prayer of because man prays for himself. Because man wants his own safety. Because man cares about his own self and cares not for God. And therefore God is angry. You want rain? Behold, here is the rain. And you drown in the flood. You say there's too much rain? Behold, no rain. And they die of the drought. God sends rain as a punishment. It was a sin of man that sent rain upon the world 1,656 years after he created it. The rain came. Therefore, what do we know? God sends rain. And God does not send rain based on the hearts of men. God is the one that decides whether it will rain or not. And then he even says a little bit later on, what happens if you have fruit? Well, then it will be pruned. The tree will be cut back so that it might bear more fruit, says in the gospel. I am the vine and you are the branches, says Saint. I am the farmer, I am the husbandman, I am the vine, I am the branch, and you are the branches. And remember also, the Saint Mary Magdalene, who mentioned many times, first saw Jesus Christ after he rose from the dead. What does the scripture tell us? She thought he was a farmer. She thought that he was a husband. And she said, Master, where have you laid him that I might complete the burial? There are many occupations. There are many duties that we must do to support our families. But sacred scripture and our holy mother, the church, put our most sacred uh, bond, or a most sacred blessing upon the farmer. And it's also interesting that the Masons hate farmers. The Masons and the Jews that run the world today, they hate farmers. And one of the priorities, for instance, in the United States down the last 100 years was to get the farmers off the farm. Something about farms are dangerous for the devil. 
teaches too much. It brings us too close to God and the way he works. A farmer knows, for instance, he may be the best farmer in the world. He may have studied all there is to know about beets and all there is to know about soybeans and all there is to know about Monsanto Corporation foods. But if God doesn't send the rain, he doesn't grow any corn. And if God decides to send a flood, it all washes away. And if God decides some locusts are going to move in this year, a few million of them, they're going to get your crops before you do. And the farmer knows he doesn't control the locusts. He doesn't control the rain. And that's the farmer who's a fool. That's the farmer who thinks too much about the ways of this world. And there's other farmers. And St. James says, there's another kind of farmer. There's a farmer that does control the rain. For Elias was such a farmer. Elias was angry because the Jews had turned away from God and they needed to be punished. Therefore he prayed and the rain did not come. And the rain stopped for three years and six months. And then after he had defeated the prophets of Baal, Nacan saw that truly he was a prophet of God and God is the one that controls the world. Elias turned and prayed again and the rains came. We can control the rain. We can indeed. I remember when we built the Church of St. Isidore's on October the 17th. And October is a very snowy month in Colorado. October the 17th in 1999, we had the blessing of the cornerstone. Sure enough, a blizzard was scheduled that day. So on the 16th, you remember the cornerstone, there's no roof on the church at that time. Let's see the cornerstone on the side of the building, and there are downstairs, walking down concrete steps into a basement. Snow, wet, mud. And there was a storm that came the next day on the 17th. So we did a nine hour to meet at the St. Isidore. Solved the problem. We worked in the wet. The next morning, the blizzard came. The snow came. Came through the city of Denver out to the plains, and it turned north. See how things were in Fort Collins. And it went up to the north. And then it turned by east. And then it turned south. And it continued on its way. And the sun came out. And all the water was dried up. And there was no wetness. And we're worried about the people slipping down the steps in lawsuits. No one slipped down the steps. And the church was blessed. Because God can control the rain. And so the rain did not come. And the snow did not come. And one day, a thousand five hundred years ago, there was a holy man named Benedict. And Saint Benedict, he decided that he was going to go back to his monastery after talking to his sister Scholastica all night, all day. She said, I'm dying tonight, Benedict. You're my sister, you're dying. That's nice. Go ahead and die. I've got to go to coffee. <laughs> he was very loving about it. And so Benedict said, Go ahead and die. I don't care. You know, I've got to go to coffee. He said, Let us talk of the things of God before I die. We did. We're done. I'm going back. And Benedict left. And when he walked outside of the monastery of Scholastica, the rain came. The torrential rain came. And he was mad. And he came back and said, what did you do? And he yelled at Scholastica, because you did this. I can't go back to my monastery because you brought down the rain. I guess I'm stuck. And so all night they talked of the things of God. One saint didn't want rain. Another one did. God had to choose. He chose Scholastica and Benedict Walsh. God can't control the rain. What is it that determines when it's going to rain, when it's going to shine? It's what's in our hearts. It's what's in our minds. And therefore, he says, St. James, be patient like the farmer. You know, we think we know all about crops. We need some rain now, Lord. Maybe we don't. He knows what the crops need. He knows what kind of fruit is needed. You know, one of the miracles that happened
happens every year, in every century. Throughout the world, there are millions of people that are born. And what happens if in one 50-year period, only boys are born? We got a problem. And the human race ceases to exist. What happens if only girls are born? Then it's worse. We got a big problem. And the world ceases to exist. How is it that everywhere in the world, one man, like my own mother, had 21 children. Most of them died in the womb, but they were later when they died, so we know what they were. They're all boys. So somewhere else, they have all girls. We don't know which family was blessed with 21 girls. But the fact is that God arranges that there will be exactly the right number of boys and exactly the right number of girls, even though we have no idea how God decides. My dad always wanted a girl. It never happened. Now, God arranges all things. We see it every day. And somehow, our faith, and somehow, our free will, is so intimately linked up with the weather. Rain came, and it was a bad storm in 1,656 years after the world was created because of the hearts of men. Rain came because of the heart of one man, and Elias prayed for that rain after a great drought. Be patient, for the fruit is coming. You know that <laughs> we cannot know. It's a bit like hunting for the seashell. The clams. You open it up and open it up and you're looking for a pearl. All you find is another stinking clam or an oyster or whatever. But God knows what should be the one that is the pearl of great price. What do we do? We keep hunting. We keep fishing. We keep doing that which God asks us to do. But what does that have to do? Seek first the kingdom of God and his justice. That's how you become a farmer. Isidore was a great farmer because he tended to the tabernacle. He tended to God. And because he tended to him with a pure heart, and because he tended to him with a real faith, God sent angels to plow his fields. Remember, they never saw the angels plow the fields until such time as the farmers complained, and they went to the funeral board, said, come out and look at the field. And they came out, and there were four angels and four plows plowing the field. There's more people coming in that field than are plowing your field. What's the problem? And they were angry. And if you don't want them back home. Another time, when it comes to food, Elizabeth, she was a great farmer. Elizabeth was hungry. She kept giving everything away because she saw only Christ in the pot. And you must feed Christ before you feed anyone else. And she gave everything away, and her husband, Lewis, was a very good man. He said, let her give everything away. But one particular day, they, they said, when she was told for a short time, don't give anything away. And they had to complain. So they went to her basket, where she was carrying some vegetables and some fruit to give to the poor, and he opened the basket and saw flowers. <laughs> but only flowers in there. What are you complaining about? Closed the basket, she went on her way and gave fruit to him. Turned into flowers. And it turned into fruit. Changed one to another. Our Lord Jesus Christ was a good farmer. Looking to the Blessed Virgin Mary. She simply turned to her son and said, They're out of wine. They have no wine. And then they brought water to him and filled up six water pots, 120 gallons of wine. And it turned into 120 gallons. And so, where does wine come from? Where does fruit come from? You know that we don't understand the physical side of the fruit. We don't understand how it is that money can be pulled out of the mouth of a fish. But it happened to the vice. It happened to Jesus Christ when he had to pay taxes. And Peter went and pulled out the money. St. Peter went and pulled money out of a fish. And so... Where does honey come from? They say it doesn't 
grow on trees. Maybe it doesn't. But if we need money, God knows how to grow it. And if we need fruit, he knows how to send it to us. <coughs> One day, Daniel was to be fed as food to lions. It was going to be the food of lions. The lions were hungry. Instead, they became his pillow. And he was hungry. And so God sent Habakkuk to bring them fresh food. And he ate. Elias, starved under a tree and upset, was risen. And he ate from the food given by the angel. And the woman of Sarepta ate the same porridge every day. We see so many times in so many places, whether it be in the lives of the saints or in our most sacred scripture, which is the true word of God of real history, but it is a study of farmers. Those who seek God first and then expect the grain. They seek God first and then they expect to be taken care of. Because you know that your master is good and compassionate. That's what St. James tells us. Behold, we account him blessed who has endured. You have heard the patience of Job. You have seen the end of the Lord, and the Lord is merciful and compassionate. Confess your sins one to another. Pray for one another that you might be saved. For the continual prayer of the just man availeth much. We are in a great battle right now. And there are many temptations. One of the temptations is to seek first what is necessary for ourselves. It's the most serious temptation. And it is a trap of the devil. I want to be right. I want to follow God. I want to do the right thing. But Lord, you've got to give me $47,000 a year. That's my minimum income requirement. I can survive on that. But if it's $43,000, i am going to have to go to another job. Because I learned about the importance of supporting your family every Sunday when I do my duty and I turn on the TV and watch football. And I learned that this poor player who's only making $27 million a year for playing for Rams, he's trying to support his family. That's all he's trying to do. And he's going to get $33 million a year if he leaves the Rams and goes and plays for the 49ers. What can you do? He's just a poor man trying to support his family. How can he keep going with only $27 million? He needs to move on for the 33 million he's going to get from the other team. And these are heroes. We used to have heroes who lived only on a potato a week. But they never got sick. They never were in the problems of those old football players who have so many health problems because of their life before. They didn't have those difficulties. We must be farmers. We must be husbandmen if we want to go to heaven. And what are we going to do? <clears throat> Seek first the kingdom of God, and then he will listen. He will listen to the prayers. He will never let us be abandoned. Be patient as was holy Job. Holy Job got a better life than the one that the devil killed. He got better children. He got more cows. He got a better of all the things that God gave him in order to prove to all mankind God is in charge of the cows. God is in charge of all material things. And God knows what we need to go to heaven. For most of us, if we have too many cows and too many dollars, we're going to go straight to hell. And God doesn't want us to be in hell for all eternity. For most of us, if we get too many things, we will be damned. And God doesn't want us to be there. And therefore, he lets us suffer a little bit. He prunes the tree like a farmer. As St. Bernard said in that sermon concerning the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he was so pleased that Mary Magdalene did not recognize him. He was so pleased that he thought, she thought that he was a farmer. And therefore, St. Bernard puts him to the heart of Christ. And therefore, Christ said, Why would you not be a farmer? I'm glad you thought of me as a farmer. For 
alone plant the seed in your heart. I alone till the soil inside of your soul. I alone make it grow. I shall take the root. Well, if you follow me as a farmer, you are not offended that Mary Magdalene, Saint Mary Magdalene, thought he was a farmer. He was so happy to be thought of as a farmer after he had conquered Satan. He was thought of as a farmer after he had won the greatest of all wars, defeated the enemy, and the greatest of all warriors is a child who leads us. And the greatest of all warriors is a farmer. How are we going to defeat the devil? They must be like children. Children don't know about paychecks. And children don't know about bank accounts. Children just know that when they open their mouth, the mother will put food in that is good for them. They just know that when they beg for what they need, it shall be given. But they don't know where it comes from. They don't know all the work that went into it. They don't know anything except it will be given because Father loves me. It will be given because Mother loves me, and they will only do what's best for me. Therefore, we must be as children, and we must be as a farmer. We must be farmers who care for the crops, but wait for the Lord to bear the fruit. And one of the great lies and great deceptions of the devil for us, you know that you're the one that makes the fruit. You're the one that did the hard work. You're the one that made that ground rain grow into wheat. You're the one that did all the wonderful things in your life. You did it. Therefore, you deserve a great reward. But the farmer knows better. The farmer knows it's God that does it. And we must be as farmers. We don't know how souls are converted. No priest knows that. We don't know how churches are built. No architect knows that. We don't know how the kingdom of God is spread. But we do know that if we are patient, we do know that if we look up to heaven with our eyes and beg the help of the Lord, and we do know that if we have faith, and we march forward as Christ commanded us to march, and if we take up our cross as he commanded us to take it up, and we follow him, there will be fruit. There will be fruit. And he will bless abundantly all that we do. If we truly seek first the kingdom of God and his justice, and wait for all the things that we need to be added aside. It's like the boy. I was a boy and go to dinner. When you go to dinner, what's for dinner? I don't know, whatever mom makes. What's she going to cook? Whatever she wants. I just know what's going to happen. I'm going to get on it. We just go to dinner. And what mom puts on the table, we're happy. And what is not peanut butter sandwiches every day? Mm. But we're happy. Mm. She puts exactly what we need on the table. And it's put there with love. And she knows the variety of things we should eat. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I am your mother. I am your father. I am your sister and your brother. He knows what we should eat. And remember, when St. Martha died, we mentioned often about her. When Martha died, our Lord Jesus Christ came down from heaven with an apron around his waist. He walked up to her and was seen by those who were deaf by the St. Martha. He said, Martha, when I was on this earth, you cooked my meals. You brought me the food that I could eat. Behold, I have prepared your table in heaven. Today I will be the cook. Today I will be the one to bring you to the kingdom of heaven, and you shall eat with me this day at my table. And so she left this earth. She went to the table of the Lord in the kingdom of heaven, and God cooked a meal for Martha. Who made the food? Who made the food? Who is going to provide for us? How many times have our ancestors went to the desert because they had nothing? And God sent them some rock. And he sent them a Habakkuk. The power of the prayer. It is prayer. It is what is in the heart of man that determines the crops. It's what is in the heart of man that determines the rain. It's what is in the heart of man that determines the weather. 
and behold there's strange weather all around us because we have strange hearts and there was a chastisement coming because of the wickedness of the hearts of men so what are we to do change our hearts and God will change the weather and he knows the weather better than us therefore be patient Child in his 
worshiping Satan, that child is trying to homosexuality. And somehow, by the prayers of the mother, by the patience of the mother, God will turn his ears, and that child shall come back to God. That child shall return to God. He listens to the prayers of those who have patience. Those who really believe that God controls the rain, and God controls the drought, and God controls the crop, and therefore they must be husbands. They must be husbandmen. They must only tend the crops, pull the weeds once in a while, so they go to confession. Fall a little water. Be nice to a poor guy once in a while. Go out and look at the crops once in a while. Now what will happen? God will bear abundant fruit because he's with those crops 20 miles a day. He's with those crops seven days a week. He's in every part of those crops. He's always with the child that's turned away from God. He knows how to turn him back. He didn't do the prodigal son. He can do it to your son. Do we believe these sacred words given to us by God in the Holy Scripture? Do we believe the truth of the lives of the saints? The first bishop in Kentucky, Bishop Benedict Joseph Fletcher, he used to visit people and they would weep because they had not enough food to make it through the winter in 1820, 1810. And he would bless their barns. He would say mass in their house. They would go to the next house. And then when they went out to their barn, the barn was filled with meat. So on and so on. God knows how to make grain increase. We're headed into a crisis. It's not a crisis of weather. It's a crisis of faith. Seek first the kingdom of God and just His justice, and all things shall be added besides. If you seek first what you need, if you seek first what is necessary for life, you shall live a small and empty life, die an empty death, and live an empty eternity in hell. But if we turn our hearts to God and wait for Him to do the work, wait for Him to send the rain, then great happiness, an exciting journey, a wonderful life, and eternal happiness in heaven is ahead of us. Thank for that faith. And that St. Isidore, the great farmer, who didn't know much about crops because he didn't tend them very often, but knew more than any other farmer because he tended to the master of the crops. He tended to him. Let us tend to him. And let's continue to ask the Blessed Sacrament, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Blessed Sacrament, his Holy Mother, who teaches us about all the things that he made, and he is compassionate. And he is benevolent, and he listens to our hearts, and that makes him send the rain. And he will send it when we need it, if we love him much. And he will take it away when we need it, if we love him much. So let's beg the grace to love the Lord with all our hearts, to seek him with all our minds, and ask the Holy Mother to teach us how to do it, and the Father Isidore to bless our crops, bless our souls, and teach us the love of that blessed sacrament, which was the key to his knowledge. Oh, fuck. It was an episode of the Father's Day. There goes to him.